G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, I'm pushing on with this uh, Stirling engine, which I'm building from two scrap flame liquor engines. The weather's pretty lousy, but you can still get down the shed and rug up and work on a bit. And, uh, yeah, the beauty of making these is that if you cast your own aluminium at home, it saves you a small fortune. Literally, you know, the cost of brass and aluminium to do this is horrendous. Steel, eh, no big deal, that's cheap. But I mean, yeah, aluminium particularly, you go and buy it, it costs you an arm and a leg, you know. But it doesn't have to, you can easily, easily cast your own aluminium, just melt it down, scrap stuff, and it will do the job. But there's a few things you have to be aware of. There's lots of videos out there on how to do this. I've done this for a very, very long time and I know what works and what doesn't work. There's a lot of uh, folklore out there. <laughs> That's bullshit, quite frankly, in my opinion. And if you start off with good aluminium to begin with, you'll finish up with good aluminium. It's as simple as that. You start with crap, you'll finish up with crap. So let's have a look at some aluminium I cast just recently. Okay, here's a nice hunk of aluminium. I started cutting through it to see what it was like, but I'm sure this would be perfect because you can always tell the way it comes out of the mould. If it comes out clean, looking like this, you know it's going to be good right through. But if it comes out wrinkly and black spots on it or, you know, uh, not uniform, you know it's going to be garbage. If it is garbage, you just remelt it and have another crack at it. I mean, it's not the end of the world. And all your leftovers, you just melt them down again. This is made out of scrap Toyota car wheel rim. You know, any of those car wheel rims that you can get, you know, for free, even if you've got to pay two fifty, three dollars to get rid of the tyre, and you know, big deal. You've got a heap of cheap aluminium for bugger or get off Gumtree, Craigslist. They're always giving them away. You know, there's a few kilo worth good aluminium there. If you went and bought that, I hate to think what you would pay for that in Australia. It's terrible, really. So, yeah. Anyway, I've got that. And I was, just, I was going to saw the end off and then re-melt it, but it was slow going, so I thought I'd bugger it, I'll leave it. And I'll melt down some other stuff which I'm not pleased about. And how do I do it? How do I get that nice aluminium, that nice round? It's easy, easy peasy, and I'll show you how. I have shown you before, but for those who are new and haven't, been up on this. Now I'm going to make some small diameter stuff. I want to make a, I've got to put a back on this. This is going to be the displacer for a Stirling engine and I've got to make up a rear section which can only be probably a little bit wider than this. So that'll be a good diameter. And that will have the bush full of the displacer and a gallery will feed off of that to go to the power piston on the uh, the rest of the unit. So this is a good size, this is just a little bit too big. So I want to go smaller. Now if you do this, <clears throat> if you do this you have to use a, a, something that's completely uniform. You know it's no good having tube with a seam in it, that won't work. You've got to have something that is totally uniform. And these are part of a roller of an old treadmill. If you ever see treadmills, get them. Strip them down, you can get all sorts of great stuff out of bearings and shafts and they're very, very well made. And I've done probably half a dozen over the years and they are extremely well made. People snap them up now because they know how good they are and you get the electric motor to play with and you can have all sorts of fun with them. Now, what happens, you pour your molten aluminium in there and aluminium will shrink and contract a hell of a lot more than steel. So when the aluminium cools down, it contracts and it pulls away from the from the steel, even though the steel was hot, they were all hot. The aluminium expanded more, so it will contract more. It pulls away and it just drops out. And then you get this beautiful, beautiful aluminium. It's as simple as that. There's a few tricks to it. There's a couple of tricks. And I'll tell you how I do it. Okay, you always, and I'll repeat, you always preheat the mould. You preheat it 
when you're building the aluminium in the furnace or you know whatever you've got get this nice and hot at the same time okay and then when you pull the aluminium in it will cool down slowly you don't want shock cooling you know I used to drop it in the bucket of water but that's really a bad thing let it cool down slowly and have the mould hot as hot as you can get it you know, everything will just can cool down slowly you won't get the aluminium not flowing properly getting chilled you know when it shouldn't be also when you pour, melt the aluminium don't worry about degassing agents don't worry about flux that's all bullshit as far as I'm concerned just melt the aluminium and as soon as it's melted and I mean as soon as it's melted and it's runny skim off the off the uh, the crack the rubbish and pour it in if you go too hot it's going to gas more the hotter you, you get the aluminium when it once it's molten the more gas is going to come out the more bubbles you're going to get don't do it as soon as you get it molten and runny that's it and if it's if there's any sort of redness in the in the um, you know the slag or the aluminium you're too hot you're way 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 too hot it should not nothing should look red hot in the aluminium side the crucible can be red hot that doesn't matter but the aluminium should definitely not look red hot okay so having just uh, ear bashed you on that i'm going to go and do some i'll do some this size and i'm going to remelt some stuff that i did way back that I wasn't ever very happy with and yeah this will be the size that I want and it will save a hell of a lot of money so let's get on with it now to do this we've just got a few things we're going to use we've got homemade crucible with some scrap aluminium in it a furnace made out of an old paint tin lined with perlite and ordinary cement okay and that's been going for a long long time it's, it's slowly falling apart I will make one of it up eventually out of an old gas cylinder which is a lot heavier but it's just the perlite that's crapping out it's not the it's not the uh, the thin tin but anyway and that's a part of an oil this is part of an old oil filter off of a tractor so yeah we're going to melt down this apply the heat we're just going to use a butane torch you know one of those ones you can get cheap off gum tree or whatever and uh, yeah that's all there is to it so you can watch an old dude so let's get on with it
do this when you're playing with a hot molten metal. Always want to play safe, wear heavy duty clothing. I always wear the old stick welding mask. That will protect your face when it goes wrong. And then of course you wear heavy gloves for the heat. And make sure, you know, there's no kids, dogs, problems around when you do this. This is something you do in an isolated environment. You play safe. There are no second chances with this sort of activity. All right, so here she is. And this is the job we got. Yeah. Come on, out you come. Normally they fall out, but this one's a bit tighter than usual. Whoa! There she is. There she is, guys. Another beautiful bit of aluminium. And, uh, yeah, it's as easy as that. So, if you want to do this, yeah, do it properly, take precautions. And it's really not difficult at all. And as I showed you, Start with good aluminium, you'll finish with good aluminium. If you start with rubbish, you'll finish with rubbish. And there's a big difference in the grades of aluminium. The aluminium in car wheel rims, alloy wheel rims is one of the better ones. Stick with that and you'll be good. And as I said, under no circumstances overheat the aluminium. That is going to be the cause of any problems that you have because, well, most of them. Always, always preheat the mould, okay? And then everything will be good. It won't chill the aluminium too quickly. And you can always tell when it's been chilled too quickly, it'll always have a rough, uneven outside surface. But as you can see, both of these are first class, really, as far as this goes. And, uh, yeah. So, easy peasy, but play safe. Okay, that's it from me. See you next time. Cheers.